front of me. Yeah, yeah. I want it so bad. I just want to reach out and touch it before it all disappears. say thank you to everybody for joining with us in this sacred space at Sacred Heart and our Community Resource Center and you know having all of these elected officials in the front row I just thought it was critical to have Father Schiller as a counterpoint um, <laughs> but now leading us calling upon us in prayer I'd like to call upon a dear friend um, he happened to serve as pastor of the church um, 
of Jersey City. I've got to say that. That's where my parents were married and I was baptized. But I'm proud to call upon our dear friend, uh, Father Francis Schiller. Father? The uh, governor said that I should just say a few words. We'll do the blessing later, he said. I was more, more worried about the collection, to be honest with you. <laughs> You know, when I was thinking about this, uh, in fact, I think uh, Governor McGreevy uh, and uh, we had met, oh, many months ago, talking about this would be an ideal place for his, uh, his program. And, uh, you know, as, I, as you come in here, uh, there are so many things that I'm reminded as when the, uh, when the monks were here. Uh, it's really built for like 20 or 40 people to live in this building. So it's really ideal for a community living and for the community program that uh, Jim McGreevy is running. And I would tell you that as I came in, I hadn't seen, although we have them in all our churches, at least uh, so those of us who are Catholic are used to seeing confessionals. Uh, and as you came in the hall hallway, as you came, walked by, there was a, uh, a door there that said it was the uh, sacrament of penance. And part of it, all of us, first is admitting our faults and then building on you know, trying to remedy those faults and becoming a different person, becoming a better person. And I thought it was so ideal that people who will walk into this building as a first time for re-entry have an opportunity to understand themselves better and to also become better and to have a second chance at life. And in one way, I was looking at the Integrity House group and I was thinking about as we see the word integrity emblazoned on their shirt, you know, one word that goes with it is respect. If you learn to respect yourself and you give that respect to others, you're well on to the way we should live as a community together. So we congratulate the, the program and we look for great things as people come in here and really remake their lives. So how, how appropriate to see that first we express our sorrows for the things that we have done to offend people and then we put about making that right in our own lives as we go on living for really to re-enter the society that we left. And I have to tell you that, uh, as Governor McGreevy said, that, uh, you know, from St. I'm in a, that small church down the street, St. Patrick's, and, uh, you know, uh, where he was baptized. And I think, I think uh, his dad and mom were married. Uh, and uh, I remember when he announced for governor, he stood outside on the steps of the church and I remember getting a call from the bishop saying, what are you doing with a politician on the front steps of the church? <laughs> and I said, but he's a Democrat. How can you not do it? Yeah. <laughs> and uh, I remember the bishop saying to me, yeah, but you had the doors wide open and everything else. I said, you know, I said, they asked to use the electric. So I had to open the doors. So, yeah. so only in Hudson County. And Governor, congratulations on this endeavor. And we wish all those who enter in here, you know, come out a better person and really having a shot at life in the future. Thanks, Father. And we're going to hear shortly from a list of distinguished individuals, but um, we believe the most important people in our lives are the people that we have the privilege to serve. And with that, I'd first like to call up Tariq Love. Tariq? Period. And you know, my dear friend Helena Mohammed made sure everybody dressed up in a shirt and tie, including me. So, uh, Tariq, it's all yours. Um, I get one more. Um, first off, I just want to thank everybody for coming out. Um, to, I, you can't hear me? Yeah. We're in real subtle group. You can hear me? Yeah, that's good. Okay. Um, the choir had a song, uh, The Prayers of a Sinner, right? Um, which is a good thing to start off right now because my concept of God is inspiration. Like, Anytime you get the idea to help or to want to do something better 
to help somebody else, that is an inclination from a higher source, right? And um, this JSAP program is that. Uh, I can say personally, everybody's beginning wasn't as perfect. And that leads me to say, Evolution, it's, uh, it's growth. Uh, I said it to Hannah and a couple other people that it's man's nature to evolve. Even as a child, you're born and you're gonna grow. This is just evolution, this is nature. And everybody knows Jersey City hasn't had the best reputation. But like I said, it's that inspiration that you know the higher power put into Mr. McGreevy, Josh, everybody at JSAP that would really want to help people. Because it's a story. It was a story. I'm gonna paraphrase it, but you'll get the meaning. It was raining. And this lady said, oh, I'm gonna wait for God to save me. The water started getting deeper. A man in a boat came. The man said, you need help? She said, no, I'm gonna wait for God to save me. It started raining heavier. Now she's barely holding her water. A man on a raft came. He said, do you need any help? She said, no, I'm going to wait for God to save me. She drowns. She see God in heaven, and she said, God, I thought you was going to save me. He said, you didn't see the two men I sent? So I said that to say inspiration, because God can inspire other people to help you through them. And I just want to show my appreciation to the people that's helping me through God, or however you want to take it. But this is what JSAP is. Like I said, it's about growth and the city is growing, it's getting better. It's still a little, you know, rough around the edges, but the point of what I'm saying is, it's about growth. And I see as a city with good people, we can become a better city. So I just wanna say I appreciate everybody for coming out and thank you. Thank you. Uh, now I'd like to call upon Tom Regal. Where's Tommy? Um, and Tommy served, how many years, Tom? 30 years? 30, 30 years behind bars. And um, Father, just for the record, he didn't lose his Democratic registration. No. Um, <laughs> here's Tom Regal. Thank you. Um, Good afternoon, everyone. Thank you all for coming. Uh, my name's Tom Regal. I uh, grew up in Kearney, and um, in uh, 1985, um, I was uh, heavily involved in drugs, and uh, as a result of that, um, someone lost their life, and um, the, uh, the Hudson County jury in 1985 returned a guilty verdict of uh, capital murder for my case. And um, fortunately, they didn't uh, give me the death penalty. Um, the judge that was sentencing me um, realized that it was a direct result of the drugs that I was using. And um, he said, you know what? Uh, I'm not going to give you a life sentence. I'm going to give you a sentence that you will get out someday. You have to serve 30 years under state law. But 
you know, uh, I got a 23-year-old guy sitting in front of me. It's a very sad thing I got to do here today, but you got to do 30 years. Okay. So on April 11th of this year, I walked out of East Jersey State Prison after doing the 30 years. Um, I got to say, for the, for the year prior to that and coming out, I was really worried about what was going to happen. I... You know, where am I going to live? Uh, am I going to get a job? Who's going to hire me? How are people going to react when they find out I was convicted of murder? Um, so many things going through my mind. Um, I will say that the entire time that I was incarcerated, all I did was prepare for that day in, in trying to improve myself spiritually, emotionally, mentally. Uh, I went through all the programs. I educated myself. I started um, teaching guys uh, the GED course. I was an English teacher in the prison. Um, so really, I prepared for everything. However, coming out, I, I'm like, what, you know, what am I, what am I gonna, uh, what am I gonna encounter? So being a resident of Hudson County, I found out about the program. And um, I guess around January, uh, I started uh, communicating with uh, John Kufos from the, uh, um, from Martin's place, and he told me about the reintegration program, the uh, reentry, and um, said, you know what, you, you certainly um, uh, fit all the criteria, and we'd love to have you in the program, we welcome you. So I guess about after three or four letters going back and forth, phone calls, we made the arrangements. Um, April 11th fell on a Saturday, so I was like, gee, I'm coming out on a Saturday. I don't know how that, how that was going to react to this, but we made all the arrangements. I uh, walked out on Saturday, went to the program. I was immediately given housing. Um, I was entered into the drug program simply because of the drug history that I have. Um, I've been in the program ever since. Um, Two weeks ago, I got a full-time job in Journal Square. So, uh, yeah. And, uh, you know, I, 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 that's all I really wanted. You know, I, when I was in the prison, all I wanted to do was come out, just be a normal person, have all the simple things, and everything's fallen into place. And this is all a direct result of the program. Um, I got to be honest with you, if the program wasn't here, I really don't know what would have happened. A uh, number of scenarios could have taken place. I could have been uh, back into crime. I could have been on the street, in a shelter. I, I have no idea, you know, but none of that has happened. Everything has been going well. Everyone at the program is wonderful. Um, I can only foresee uh, positive things continuing to happen. And as a result of the program, I am a better person, and I will continue to be a better person from this day forward. Thank you very much. So, thanks, Tom. And I, I just want to make sure that the Hudson County Executive, Tom DeGees, heard that we're taking people throughout Hudson County, so next time we ask him for more money, I'll have Tom make the call. Um, and now I'd like to call upon uh, Don Juan Smart. Don? Butch, you have to take off? Butch, could you just raise your hand? Butch back there, FMG, did all the plumbing. Um, he happens to be a Republican. He's a great guy, and he's friends with all of us. But thank you very much, Butch. Thank you. I'd like to say good afternoon, and I give honor to my Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, because none, none of this could be possible without God. Um, God is the center of my life. Um, I thank God for these angels that he placed in my life. I thank God for you, Mayor, for bringing this program to this community, because it was well needed. And um, I, know, I know that it was designed by God for this program to come to Jersey City to help someone like me. So I thank you for bringing this program. I thank God for all those that helped me from this program, from this far. Um, 
I'm actually living my dream now. Uh, I always wanted to be a truck driver. And one special person that I want to give thanks to, and that is Shay, because um, she, uh, um, I have, uh, I thank God for John. John helped me get my license back with the guidance and the things that he have told me to do. I got my driver's license back. I like to give a special thanks to Josh. Josh, I thank God for Miss Muhammad, my caseworker. But I, the program, the program is very helpful. If you apply it to your life, it can really help you. If you come in and be honest with the people and tell them people what you need, they will put you in the right direction. So I am very grateful for the program, Mayor. I, I, I pray that God continue to bless you and open your mind to bring things to Jersey City because it's well needed in Jersey City. Jersey City is not a, a, a popular city. You know, it's a lot of drugs and things going on. You know, a, part, a time in my life, I sold drugs on these streets. But one thing that I did, I gave my life to God. And that was the best thing that I could ever do is give my life to God. So I thank God for these angels that he brought to Jersey City to help us. And I'm thankful, and, and thank you for this opportunity. And last speaker we'll have is Tafwa. Where's Tafwa? Taf. Taf, get up here. Taf is one of the special guys, even though he reached the wrong team. What, Chicago? Go ahead. Yeah, Chicago, my favorite team. Testing, you hear me? Yeah. Yeah, um, you gotta bring it up here so I ain't gotta keep leaning all the way up there, relax, man. I got this. <laughs> yeah, I don't know exactly how many people have lived, you know, so, I mean, but most people live, you know, difficult lives, but I don't think too many in this room can compare their lives to my lives. You know, at one point, you know, as a kid, you know, running the streets, trying to be a part of something, you know, trying to be accepted, trying to be loved, you know, eventually, my life took a 360 when my mother was separate, when we were separated from my mother, which eventually led me in the wrong direction. At the age, just turned the age of 15, I caught a homicide along with someone else. As a result, I was waved up as a child, from, from a child to an adult, and was sentenced to 30 years. I did 30 years of my life in prison. And within those 30 years of being incarcerated, my mindset was, was crazy. You know, it was, if it wasn't black, it wasn't right. You feel me? And at the same time, I, I harbored a lot of personal anger towards authority. I really believed, I had no faith in the system. And what confirmed that is that when I got released after doing 30 years of incarceration on 2014, on, on April, to, April 2nd, 2014, the state sent me out after 30 years with nothing. They sent me to the streets. Now, mind you, while in this system, I suffered loss of great family members. Most of my family members passed away. I did. 11 years in solitary confinement, that means in a cell by myself, no human contact. I mean, so when the system sent me home, they sent me home with nothing. So when I, and I'm actually not from Jersey City, I'm from Newark, I'm a resident of Newark. But I came to Jersey City because I had an aunt, I mean a cousin who stayed out here. So when she moved, when she was out here, I stayed with her. But at the same time, she got a son, she got bills. She can't no longer provide for me, her son, her boyfriend, and whatever things that she was going through. So I went up and I started robbing, and I started robbing people after 30 years because I couldn't have no means to, um, to survive basically from day to day. So basically what I'm saying is that once I was back into the county jail, I was given, I was facing six months to three years for petty theft, again, only because I'm trying to make ends meet. But had not it been for people in Hudson County, 
I wouldn't be here to, t to, to say what I'm saying now. Why? Because there is people out here who do give a damn, who do believe in second chances. And it's important that we as people understand the powerful, the powerfulness of forgiveness. I mean, there are many different forms of forgiveness. I, I, paid for my, I paid for my mistakes and for my wrong. I did 30 years for that. I shouldn't have to come into society and still have to struggle from tooth to nail knowing that it's a possibility of recidiv recidivism. But running into Hannah in the county jail who offered me the reentry program, and it was through Hannah that I was able, able to participate into the reentry program. As a result, I was given housing in Belmont. I stayed there for like three, three to five months. At that point, I'm back on my own. But fortunately for me, while I was in prison, I built structures, I built relationships, I built families with people who was going through what I was going through. And the brother Shadi, which is my right hand, Heard about my situation, struggling. He had just came home after doing 17 years. Brought me into his house with his family, his wife, his nephew. You know, I met the whole family. So basically, what I'm trying to say to the people is that had not it been for this program, I wouldn't be able to be in a position to say to you that it's a necessity that we have more programs like this that we have people in our lives who believe in second chances, who believe in helping us correct the mistakes that we made growing up, even the mistakes we make in the day. This is what, it's not about black or white, it's not about religion, to me it's not, because it's in a way. And, like, and I learned since I've been home is that you can't really walk down the street and be social no more with people because everybody got plugs in the air. Nobody's listening to each other. Nobody's paying, tweet, paying attention to no one suffer. So I'm going to say this because I got to go to work. Thanks to <laughs> Jim McGreevy and JSEP and all the people that work for JSEP was able to get me a job. Thank you. Thank you. So thank you. Appreciate you for listening. That's it. That's I got to go to work. You got to go work? Yeah. I got a job. I got to pay the bills. You got to pay the bills. All right. Tough was at um, Mayor. He's at Coco Bakery. There's a plug for Coco Bakery. All right. Um, now I'd like to, we're going to speed up the program. We focused on what's most important, our clients. And I do believe my dear friend Shirley Reeves is in the back someplace. Shout out to Shirley. But I'd like to call upon quickly... Bob Budzak, the great president of Integrity House, who is our treatment provider. All right. 30 seconds. Thank you. Okay. Jim, Jim told me I had 30 seconds. So, uh, so first of all, Integrity House is, uh, is pleased to be part of this initiative. Integrity House has been around since 1968. Our mission at Integrity House is to provide opportunities for individuals to reclaim their lives. We have 500 licensed residential uh, beds for addiction treatment in the state of New Jersey. We have 200 uh, in Secaucus on Hudson County uh, property, thanks to uh, Executive Tom DeGees. We have another 220 beds in Newark, New Jersey, and then we have 80 beds inside the Hudson County Jail. Um, the, four, uh, the four pillars to recovery, uh, it, as far as what my, my opinion is, is that so an individual needs a job, they need a place to live, they need a treatment, which Integrity House is providing, and in addition to that, they need a network of social, spiritual, and emotional support. And I'm going to tell you a brief story, even though I only have 30 seconds, and that's five years ago, Jeff Persley, who's the chair of the board at Integrity House, uh, came to me and the founder of Integrity House and says, listen, we have a guy that wants to do some volunteer work at Integrity House. He's going to come run groups about spirituality. Um, and we says, you know what, bring him in. And he says, listen, this guy's a former governor, you know? So I'm like, okay, bring him in anyway. And, and Jim McGreevy walked through the door, 
And, um, and Jim came in and Jim says, listen, I want to do some volunteer work for Integrity House. I just want to uh, you know, implement a curriculum on spirituality. Um, and that was five years ago. And he just came down. And as a volunteer, the guy was, uh, he was definitely outworking me. The guy was working 12 hours a day, seven days a week. And then Mayor Stephen Fulop was, uh, was, was kind enough to, to, to give Jib a, a decent playing job as opposed to the volunteer work. Um, and, I, and I also want to recognize that supportive housing is a big part of what we do. And, and we're, we're happy to have the acting governor here today. Um, Lieutenant, uh, Lieutenant Governor Kim Guadano, and Integrity House also has supportive housing for men and women, uh, which is a key component, and the, the uh, administration of the state of New Jersey has been very supportive in expanding drug court, uh, expanding pr prisoner reentry, and supportive housing. So that's it. That's my 30 seconds. Thank you, Jim. Thank you. And as as the county executive and Tom and the mayor knows, Integrity's our full partner, not only here, but at Martin's Place, but most importantly in Hudson County Jail. Um, the next person I'd like to call upon, um, he's the president of the Hudson County Building Trades, and you saw Butch uh, with FMG, uh, Phil and Sal Electric, uh, numerous friends, that the Building Trades have been full partners in making this reality. I'd like to call upon, uh, despite the fact that he's a plumber, I'd like to call upon my dear friend, Pat Keller. And, and he, last year, the um, St. Patrick's Day Committee father uh, was really in a tough place, um, and they named Kelleher their Grand Marshal, so. Thanks, Maureen. <laughs> Lieutenant Governor, Mayor Fulop, Tom DeGeese, Senator Stock, Mayor of uh, Union City, and uh, Assemblyman Raj McCurgy. The building trades have been out in Hudson County for over a hundred and something years. Uh, Governor McGreevy reached out to me. Like anything else, we're an unutilized organization. But with the help of Mayor Fulop, Tom DeGeese, about getting programs and getting men and women into the building trades, we're at the full front. We're gonna be moving ahead. And building trades that are here today, F&G is my, uh, I'm the business agent for the plumbers, Sal Electric is 164, but all the trades understand the importance of this, and we understand it's the right thing to do. I'd like to say thank you, Jim, thank you, County Exec, Lieutenant Governor, Mayor, uh, Senator Stack, and everybody for support, and all the people that are here today. Take care. And and to talk about connectivity, as I think uh, Tom said before, it was Tom writing to Father Squeo that we were able to bring Tom Regal into our program uh, through Catholic Charities, and it was Father Schiller um, talking to us about the archdiocese that secured this, this wonderful edifice. Th this, this next gentleman um, has been in public service all of his life. And this is really a, a full partnership uh, with Hudson County, Jersey City. It's indistinguishable, the boundaries. And what I'm so honored uh, with my dear friend, uh, Director Oscar Villas, is what the work that's happened behind the wall uh, in the county jail, but outside of. And so we look at this sacred space as serving all of, of Hudson County. The commitment and the resolve to reentry in this county would not have been possible without this next speaker. He is among the most compassionate, good persons I've ever had the pleasure of knowing. Our Hudson County Executive, he's on the A-line this year, Tom DeGeese. We actually haven't drawn for ballot positions, right? But he's, uh, he's probably right. Uh, <laughs> Hey, you know, uh, I'm a Jersey City guy, you know, 64 years here, and you think you've seen it all. I've never seen this room. It's a, it's a kick to be up here. What a beautiful room. An investment in an air conditioner would probably be the, a wise next step. And, but what a beautiful room it is. And, uh, you, know, you know, the, um, the name, Martin's Place. 
It, it, it just rings really nice. You know, the name Martin somehow has taken on a little bit of a life of its own, uh, you know, that where it connotes certain things, justice, peace, uh, equality. And, you know, just the other day, I was listening to the oldie station in my car, and I heard Abraham, Martin, and John by Dion. You've got to be a little bit old to remember that song. But uh, the, the coupling of the names, Abraham, Martin, and John, then later on, and Bobby let you know that it was uh, written probably around 1968 when I was a senior in high school. It still is something magical. You know, with this program right, right now, uh, you know, a lot has been said. A few more things will be said, and I'm trying not to be repetitive, but I think that we politicians sometimes get caught up a little bit on numbers when we're talking about crime, incarceration, you know, homicides are up, the, you know, something else is a percentage down, and we talk about numbers. But I think seeing some of the people that were up here earlier today and knowing, you know, many of the people within our community, these aren't numbers, these are people. And the reasons that they may have found themselves incarcerated uh, are varied and many uh, there. And so the solutions need to be varied also. Otherwise, you're doing nothing. And, and in this organization, with this, um, with this uh, Martin's house right now, there'll be one port of entry. And if the person there, that individual, is in need of education, of training, of job placement, of counseling for drugs or alcohol, any kind of mental issues that got them in trouble in the first place, this one place will enter into a system that will offer help for everybody, not just percentages, and the percentages will work out well if we do this right. The county is totally committed to it. You know, with Frank Massa here leading the way uh, for the county, uh, Ben Lopez in the Division of Family Services finds pockets of money that uh, are able to be spent. And Oscar Avilas, who the uh, governor mentioned, who's leaving us in about a week and a half right now, but we will continue uh, with uh, our administration to not only support these projects, but to see them grow. I'm honored to be here tonight. I'm honored to have Hudson County as a part of Martin's Place. Thank you very much. And thank you, County Executive. I went a little out of order. Um, what happens is going to be 58. At first, um, by the way, I'd also like to recognize our chairman of uh, JSEP. Could he wave, give a wave? Of, thank you very much, Your Eminence. <laughs> Roger Jones, thank you. Bob Knapp. I'd like to call upon our director of reentry, um, somebody who's been so strong and powerful and helped not only this. You know, it was a 1,900-page application. Um, I'm sure Jim Pelosi, um, God bless him. Um, but I'd like to call upon John Kufos. John? Good afternoon. So, you know, we've heard stories from our clients. Uh, that, and I think the takeaway there, their redemption is connected to integrating the systems that Jersey City has, that the state have, that the county have. These systems all exist. And the idea is to get them to, to work flawlessly for the benefit of the clients. You know, we hear Tom Regal pulled out of essentially a state prison to go right into housing. And that will give us the sa safer streets. We know parole works. We know reentry works. We know supervision and drug-based drug treatment work. And if hope if hope is a seed of redemption, Sacred Heart will be that garden. Thank you. That's the most poetic thing John has ever said. For those of you who know John, usually I'm on the receiving end of words that have four or three letters. But thank you. Um, John, that was, I want to thank John. Um, the next gentleman is, um, you know, Tafwa talked about redemption. I'm going to talk about it a little bit when I introduce the mayor, but I, I'm going to get myself in trouble. I, I happen to be a big, on the issue of reentry, a big Chris Christie fan. And 
The reason is, I know the governor often says, Brian, he agrees with me on one issue. I said, that's enough. Um, but the person, in addition to the governor's commitment to addiction treatment, which is sincere and heartfelt and irrevocable, it's also the people around him. And the gentleman that he selected as chairman of the parole board is among the most honorable, loving, good human beings I've ever had the pleasure of meeting in my life. And in this business, you meet a lot of folks, but there aren't all that many people that are motivated with the purity of intention and decency of the chairman of the state parole board. I am just so honored that he's here today and a couple of parole officers and lieutenants. But this is the man who speaks with clarity and purpose as to reentry, our chairman, Jim Pelosi. Thank you, Governor. And um, let me just begin by saying every life is precious. Um, we hear our governor say that in every speech that he gives, that every life is precious. And um, he doesn't just say that, he has backed it up. For the last six years in regards to reentry, he has been at the forefront of uh, addressing reentry at every level. He set up a task force to look at reentry to see how we can take the roadblocks away from guys and gals getting back on the right track. As you heard earlier, expanded drug court. Um, the list goes on and on. Ban the box. As a, you can say a lot of things about the governor, but the governor has been strong and solid on reentry. And I, when, when he first got in, we talked about it, and I told him point blank. I said, Governor, reentry is not a popular political thing to do. He says, I don't care. It is the right thing to do. So for six years, himself as well as Lieutenant Kim Gordano has led the way, not only in New Jersey, but for the country in regards to reentry. So again, whatever you think of that man, you can disagree with him, but you have to give him accolades for standing up in regards to putting reentry on the map in New Jersey as well as in the country. So I'm honored to be here today. Because it, as we saw, it's truly a partnership. And I have to, I have to, to say that Hudson County and Jersey City has been great partners, not just on reentry. When we wanted to do Fugitive Safe Surrender a couple years back, the, 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 the county exec and the mayor stepped up. It was a monumental task. We had 5,000 people get their lives straight for that three-day period that we did that here in Jersey City. So they've been a long-term partner here, and I just see great things coming out of it. And I, I, really, us being in this house of worship, um, it, it really adds a new dimension to every life is precious. Thank you. And um, before I call up the mayor, you know, we have um, Raj Mukherjee, a great as assemblyman here, and we also have Reverend McRae, I've got to protect my soul, um, in the back, thank you, and, and Keith Davis, a number of friends, but we have somebody um, who's a great mayor, um, who's somebody who works diligently on behalf of Union City, and um, you know, I just saw an article, he's Hudson County's mayor, he's just a big shot, um, somebody who's who follows up diligently. I just saw him, I was on Pershing Avenue. I was on Pershing in the field. And um, some guy was, ex was talking about the pigeons and the pigeons and what the pigeons were doing. And um, Mayor Stack was taking the gentleman's name and phone number when he started. But um, he is somebody who's committed to detail, to getting it done, uh, my dear friend, uh, Senator Brian Stack. Brian. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. Just forgive me for not having a tie on today. Very few times I don't have a tie on, but I was out doing constituent days today and I, I didn't wear a tie, so forgive me. This is a wonderful program. Congratulations, Governor, on a great program here. Congratulations to Integrity House. Thank you to our Lieutenant Governor and our Governor for their commitment. Mayor Fulop, you're doing a tremendous job here in Jersey City, and our county exec, thank you for your commitment, which I know is longstanding to this program. 
Our State Parole Board Chairman, thank you very much, Jim, for all you do. I appreciate that very much. And uh, the reentry program is something that we'd like to expand, and I'd like to speak further about that into Union City, into North Hudson, to really expand this program even more. Um, we do a lot of hiring in our different various departments, but I'd like to make it official and really join the program with a great job that you're doing here in Jersey City. Congratulations to all and some of the stories that I've heard today from those that were incarcerated. Um, if I didn't have the opportunity I had and I didn't have the family I had, well, who knows where I would have been today. And I think all of us need to relate to that. Some of us don't have the same opportunities other people have. And second chance is critical and so important. And you have my commitment, not only as a, as a, as a fellow mayor to Mayor Phillip, but also as a state senator to help you to expand this program and even make it better. Thank you very much, everyone. And uh, we have a couple of the council here. Is Councilman Joyce Waterman? Where's Councilman Waterman? Is Councilman Joyce? Where's Joyce? Joyce here? Okay, is Councilman Diane Coleman here? Hey, hey, there she is. Can we give it up for Councilman, War Councilman Coleman? Councilman Coleman has his new haircut, please, like it's fancy. Thank you, please, you know. But thank you very much. Um, do you want to say anything, Diane? Okay. Good afternoon, everybody. I hope you know that this reentry program is from the bottom of my heart, the most exciting thing that I've seen happening in, and I'm glad to say, in Jersey City and in Ward F. I can't think of a better place to bring troubled souls than in a place like this that has the spirit of our Father to protect them and take away those troubled souls. So that's a wonderful feeling for me. The second thing is, I want to thank Governor McGreevy because we fought, believe me, don't think he just walked in here like this. We fought hard. But he's proven to me that he has taken Martin's place and he has made a safe haven for those so in need of a second chance. You see, I, I, I had a social service agency and I've had ex-offenders come to me. I had one gentleman that comes to my mind right now that I wish Martin's place existed when he came to me. 30 years in prison, he still doesn't know why, and he didn't know how to operate a cell phone when he came out, and he was lost because the streets have changed, the televisions have changed, the communication methods had changed, he didn't have any driver's license or any ID, he didn't know where to go, and Building an Empire tried to help him out. We had to go to five different places just to make some of those things happen, but thank God for Governor McGreevy because now you can go to Martin's place and you can get all of those things, your license, your ID, treatment, uh, counseling. What better, better kind of an organization is that to open up for the citizens who have been accused and tried and served their time and have no place to come? So I want to say thank you all for being here, but this is just exciting to me, and I want to thank Governor Grevy for fighting with me and making this happen. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Um, so, you know, it, it's, um, by the way, I want to thank our friends from the State Bar Association. We're sister. We're Sister Frances. She was here. Hey, I, I just want, like, next door is Sacred Heart School, and 40 years there, 55 years of religious life, she runs a tough ship. Sister Frances, step up, stand up. Come on, sister. Sister, come on, please. And I, I want the mayor to know, every Wednesday, sister, what's the time slot I got? 12.15 to 1. 12.15 to 1. I'm teaching 7th and 8th graders at Sacred Heart. Um, you know, F Philip doesn't really pay, but, um, but let me just say, um, before I call upon the mayor, um, you know, in life, you have the pleasure and honor to meet individuals that you feel there's there's something very special and during the course of his election uh, the mayor asked me to sit down at um, the Miss America diner and um, Tom I was immediately impressed that he paid um, bowl of vegetable soup and a cup of coffee 
And the mayor asked to talk about reentry. Blah, blah, blah. Talk about reentry. And Father, I thought, we had a good conversation. He asked a lot of thoughtful questions. And I thought that was the end of it. And um, the mayor went on to win the election. And he called me up and said, uh, I'd like you to come and talk to me. And, and he asked, he goes, well, how would you like to put that to work? And I was working at the privilege, of, I was at Integrity. And um, Mayor Fulop, Steve said, I want you to do this. I want you to do it right. This is a critical issue for the community. I want one, New Jer one Jersey city. And he says, go out there and do it, and whatever it takes. And I, this has been the most rewarding aspect of my life. I think in large measure because I have the privilege and pleasure of working for a man who had a vision for reentry, saw all souls as redeemable, and made it happen. And as Tom DeGees knows, I am an indefatigable pain in the, I mean, fighting for resources, fighting for space. Ask Shay, we finally got him out of Martin's place, took everything I had. Um, but this city is blessed. And I see Maureen and a lot of old families, I see my parents here. This city is really blessed, it's an extraordinary place. But I think in large measure it's an extraordinary place because we have a mayor who frankly, when no one was talking about reentry except for Tom DeGees, there weren't mayors talking about it. Um, Steve Phillips said, I want to make this a cornerstone of my administration, whether you're Republican or Democrat. I know I have a great debt of gratitude to somebody who, despite a little controversy I had in 2005, um, he was willing to take a chance because he thought it was the right thing to do. He's a man of great character, guts, and strength. Our mayor, Steve Fuller. Thank, thank you. I, I'm going to say that I share some of the blame. I'm going to say some of the blame that there is no air conditioning in this room. And uh, I will tell you that uh, about six months ago, uh, Governor McGreevy came to me and our chief of staff and said, I have this great idea um, to have an aspect of the reentry program in a church and what better place to come in. And he had this vision of this chapel and he explained it to us. And we said, yeah, sure, Jim, sure, whatever. And, uh, and then four months ago, he came back into us and said, um, I know you fund us a lot of dollars in the CDBG money, but uh, we need another million dollars. And uh, Mark and I said, Jim, stop it. You gotta stop with this stuff. And as Tom knows, he's relentless again and again. I need a million dollars, I need a million dollars. And we said, no, we have funding this and we're funding that and we're funding little leagues and we're funding non-for-profits throughout the city. And Jim says, fine. And then about two months ago, you know, Mark and I wake up and we look on our voicemail and you see the head of uh, Little League from Pershing Field calling and the head of the Soccer Association and the head of Roberto Clemente. And everybody has the same thing. They says, Jim says you agreed to cut our funding. And, uh, and uh, we had to go to each one of them and say, listen, that's not the way it's going to be. And here we are today. We reiterated to Jim again and again, you know, you use the money you have, no bells and whistles. And voila, no air conditioning. So I share with you that uh, it, it's, been a, it's, been a, uh, it's been an experience and uh, one of the best hires that I could have made and I couldn't be more excited and happy that we made that decision here in Jersey City. You know, Jim, Jim told you the story on how we all met originally and uh, we sat down at the diner and I didn't know where that conversation would go, but when he shared um, the problems that exist not in just in Jersey City, but in urban areas around the country. You have 3% of the world population, 25% of the incarcerated population, 2,000 plus people coming out of the prison system to Jersey City every single year, the recidivism rate, the lack of housing, 70% of them have addiction issues. And when you go through all of that, you understand that this is an issue that's not unique to Jersey City. And when you heard the passion that he spoke about it with, it was really a no-brainer to move forward on this. You know, I, I am proud of this program for so many reasons. 
Um, you heard about it earlier, uh, some of the people that you really are changing lives in a meaningful way, and that's really what our role is in government. And when you talk about government overall, what's really special about this program is that if you look at all the different partners that make Jersey City a model in the state of New Jersey, you have a Republican governor, you have a county leaders, you have local leaders, it's a bipartisan issue that touches the state, that touches the county, that touches the municipality, all working together to make sure that we are making lives in Jersey City and soon to be a larger area in New Jersey, in Atlantic City, in Patterson, in Newark, better because this is a true model for the state of New Jersey. So um, I couldn't be more proud of your work. And I just want to say thank you all for the work that you do in coming out today and supporting us and digging in in a hot room because we all know, and I know that you all know, that the work that's going on here at Martin's Place is special work and important work. Thank you. Thank you. And I, I just, you know, Mayor, I just want, I, I want Chairman Pelosi to know and I want the acting governor to know that, you know, Ziad Shahadi, who is our director of operations, happened to be the youngest Republican mayor in the state of New Jersey. And so I feel like I've broken every diversity barrier uh, there is. But Ziad, you know, watches every dime and he says, we're out of budget, you know, Democrat, I would have had the air condition in, but, you know, Tom. Um, but now, you know, it's, um, when the mayor talked about this being a great common sacred place and our governor, our county executive, our mayor, our acting governor, the chairman of the parole board, people of faith, people of goodwill coming together to understand um, that in many ways, as we say in the rooms, I'll keep it in the eye, I know that I'm broken and I know that there have been those persons in my life that were willing, including my parents that are here today and my sister, that were willing to be supportive and loving. And part of having a governor and an acting governor that understands this has been transformative. Thanks to the leadership of, in a special way, Speaker Vinnie Prieto, um, who's been an indefatigable lion in this endeavor, and the governor's office, $3.5 million uh, was provided to the New Jersey Reentry Corporation to replicate this great noble experiment in Newark, in Patterson, in Toms River, and other communities. That doesn't happen. Thanks, Mary. <laughs> Lauren, you better clap in Patterson. Um, yeah, that was a little weak. Um, but that doesn't happen by accident. And um, not only because she exerts influence for good in the arts and economic development in spurring private investment in the state of New Jersey. But I also am blessed to have many personal friends that are really good friends with our acting governor. And so for all that she has done for jobs, and Patty Moran, my dear friend, is here from the Department of Labor, and I want to shout out to Commissioner to Hal, but all that she has done for jobs, for economic development, but believing in the promise of reentry. Ladies and gentlemen, it's my great honor to introduce our acting go governor, Kim Gardner. I do have to tell one quick non-political story. As we sit in the well when the governor gives his state of the state speech, the governors are all invited and the governor McGreevy sits next to me usually because we get to choose and I choose Jim McGreevy every time. Don't tell the other governors I said that. Um, and during the speech where the governor actually stood up and said, we are committed to fixing the problem of recidivism in the state of New Jersey, Governor McGreevy jumped up, tears streaming down his eyes, now, I'm still sitting. He's clapping. I look at him and I said, oh no, I should be standing and clapping too. This is my governor. So we did and they snapped a picture of you and I, tears falling down your face as I was clapping and realizing that the former Democratic governor of the state of New Jersey was applauding the Republican governor because as you all know, recidivism doesn't have a political party, the last I checked. Yeah, I spent the last 32 years practicing law, most of it putting bad guys in jail, part of it taking bad guys, at, keeping bad guys out of jail, and a, and a small part of it is the sheriff of Monmouth County where I 
I ran 1,300 bed facility um, as a county jail. And we all know how tough the numbers are. 67% of the people who leave those jails, whether it be the state jail or the county jail, will go back. They will go back if they don't have two things. First, a desire to change. And second, the resources and support that they need to change. That's what today is all about. Finding those people who want to change and giving them the opportunity and the support in this community that they need to change. Because as the governor has said, there is no life that is disposable. We have to fight for them all like we fight for jobs in Jersey City. Every single person you heard speak today and the dozens, if not thousands of others you will hear over the next years of this center's existence will tell you they needed help. And they got it here in church. That's where they should get it. That's where we all need to get it. So I thank those who came and told their stories about their own personal struggles. It takes a lot to stand up in front of a group of politicians and a group of reporters and a group of young people and talk about what their experiences have been. But we need to hear those stories. We need to tell those stories. And I suspect as I look around the room, every single one of us has a personal story of someone who is struggling, maybe not with prison sentences, but certainly with addiction. One is too many and two is not enough. All of us know someone who struggles with that. So what today is about is helping those people who desire to have help, helping those people get those, that help, not because we're Republicans or Democrats, but because we're people, we're moms, we're dads, we're aunts, we're uncles, we're brothers, we're spouses. All of our community is better if we help those people who need the most help. That's what today is about. That's what the center is about. That's what our administration has been about since day one. So I congratulate you, Jim McGreevy. Keep up the good fight. I like to hear you fighting with Democrats in Hudson County. Oh, come on. <laughs> How to do one. <laughs> and I, I look forward to fighting with you because I can't think of a fight more worth having than to fight to keep the people who need the most help get the people who need the most help, the help that they need. So congratulations, all of you. Thank you for having us today. And I'd like to see the rest of this facility. Thank you, sir. Thank you. And um, I'm going to call up Father Schiller for the blessing and then my dear friend Gloria Walton for, for the blessing. But again, this has been a, a, a team effort. And I can't thank uh, the state of New Jersey enough, our full partners with the Department of Labor, uh, Gary Lanigan, the Department of Corrections, the Attorney General's Office, John Hoffman, uh, obviously the Chairman and the entirety of the State Parole Board, uh, including my dear friend Lenny Ward, don't hold it against him, Mr. Chairman, and uh, all of our partners. And then in addition to the county, I can go on and on, as the county executive said, Corrections, Family Services, Ben Lopez, uh, Frank Mazza, all of our partners, and in the great city of Jersey City, the entirety uh, from the police department, even including the chief of staff, Mark Albies, who turned down uh, the deputy mayor would have been with me on the CDBG application, but hey. Um, and now I, I'd just like to call upon uh, Father Schiller. Uh, this is a universal blessing, Father. And then we'll call my dear friend Gloria Walton up for the final benediction. Get your holy water. Jim's very big on holy water. Uh, and anything, one good thing about it is blessings are always short. So. Almighty God, we ask your blessing upon all of us gathered here. We ask you to bless these halls. We ask you to bless those who come into this hall. Water has always been a sign of rebirth, whether it was from God's people when he led them out of Egypt into Israel, whether it's God's people in the modern world, whether it's Christian, Jew, Muslim, all who serve the Almighty. We ask your blessing upon all of us here and to bless this house, whoops, sorry. <laughs> Uh, the Pearl, they got a uh, real splash. <laughs> I really meant that for the mayor. <laughs> so we thank you, God, for this. We thank you for the giving the, the gifts of these people who help each other to come and become better people. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Father. Um, that was.
That was more of a bathing than a blessing. Christina and Christina are going to sing uh, the, one of my favorites. Christina, I just want to thank her because she is an incredible voice. And I just, okay. Thank you so much for doing this. Why should I feel discouraged? And why should the shadows come? Why should my heart be lonely and long for heaven and home? When Jesus is my portion, a constant friend is he. His eye is on the sparrow, and I know he watches me. His eye is on the sparrow, and I know he watches me. I sing because I'm happy, and I sing because I'm free. And Zed, who else are we thinking? Andy's Market for Ocean Avenue. Where's Andy's Market from Ocean Avenue? Hey, can we have a round of applause? All that good food. Thank Andy's Market. I just want to publicly apologize. I wanted to publicly apologize to Andy's Market. They would have gotten paid, but the mayor, you know. Just, you know. Um, and uh, I just also wanted to note uh, two things. One, you heard a lot about the national recidivism rate in our program. I'm proud to say, uh, thanks to the leadership of our county executive and our mayor and our acting governor, our chairman of the parole board, our recidivism rate, as Chairman Jones knows, is 22 percent. And that number, that number has been certified uh, by the United States Department of Justice, Bureau of Justice Assistance, and so, and we were designated, as my dear friend Jeff personally knows, as one of seven gold standard reentry centers across this nation. So, and I want to thank the Department of Corrections uh, for making a commitment uh, for correction officers. I want to thank uh, the mayor for his commitment for uh, police officers. This is how I get them to buy in. They don't know. And. Um, and also the cameras and, and what we're going to be. We are going to make this a center of our community. We're going to make this a healthy, good place to be. And with that, I'd like to call upon my dear friend, Gloria Walton, who runs a part of our female housing center and um, for a prayer, closing prayer. Mm -hmm. <laughs> On behalf of the most excellent ways, I'm honored to give the benediction of such a great event no one could have done this but Governor Jim McGreevy. The story of redemption is awesome, but it's because of the, the spirit of reconciliation in which you guys possess in this house that we give honor to God today. Amen? Amen. So as we close, we, we want to thank God. We want to thank you for the opportunity 
to share in the lives of those that have paid the price for their, for whatever it was, whether innocent or guilty, they've paid the price. And so now we look into the hills which come with our help. We give honor and thanks unto God for the opportunity to share, to live. We thank God for our mayor who declares a city of peace and re reciprocity in the lives of those who come as they are. In the name of our Lord and Savior, we give honor and thanks. Amen. Amen. Thank you. And lastly, um, thank you, Gloria. Lastly, I want to thank the Archdiocese of Newark. And I have a letter from the Most Reverend John J. Myers, Archbishop of Newark, um, who are our partners at this facility. I'm very much in favor of the new Community Resource Center at the Dominican Priory of Sacred Heart Church in Jersey City. The Archdiocese is very happy to cooperate in this new venture we are undertaken at the Jersey City location. And thank you for their leadership and cooperation. I'd like to thank the Archdiocese. I'd like to thank, most importantly, all of you. And lastly, you should know this. If you get a chance to go downstairs on the first floor, between this building, the Priory, and the church, you'll see a hallway of what this building looked like. Peeling paint, water damage, and it were, Tom, it was the inmates of Hudson County Jail that painted this facility, that scraped, you should have seen this place, that scraped the windows, put on the trimming, painted it white, did the floors, and so I just want you to know, and. We talked to some of the inmates and they talked about giving back and transforming their lives and their spirit so that this has all been about service. And in one of my favorite quotes in the Gospel of St. Mark, the Son of Man comes not to be served, but to serve. And God willing, we continue to serve our fellow brethren and sisters. Thank you and enjoy the food in the library. Thank you.